he, we are safe in the arms of the Lord. Time has come for us to hear uh, the word of the Lord. And again, I am glad for uh, our speaker tonight who's agreed to, to go to work. And I'm going to ask everyone in the house uh, to stand, if you will, be so kind. We, he really needs no introduction. We all know him, we love him, and appreciate what God is doing with him and through him. So if you will, put your hands together and welcome to this podium, the Honorable Suffragan Bishop, John Ellis. Come on, make some noise up in here. Yes, sir. Thank you, Bishop. Thank you. Take somebody by the hand, stretch across the aisle, and leave nobody untouched on this evening. He shall hide me safe in his arm. It's good to know that his arms are wide enough to embrace all of us at this. Father, we thank you. We love you on this evening. Thank you for you being who you are, God, all by yourself. Thank you, Lord, for fellowship and kinship friendship and partnership but most of all thank you for relationship that we have with you and a relationship we have with one another we thank you for this is the day that you have made we will rejoice and be glad in it father we pray now your blessings upon our leader our bishop today thank you for life lord thank you for strength we pray lord that your hand of favor and anointing will continue to rest upon him even now Thank you, Lord, for Bishop Young on this evening. Thank you, Lord, for Mother Young. Lord, thank you for your healing power and your keeping power even now. Lord, we thank you for your hand resting upon her, your hand of grace and favor even right now. And Lord, for my brother, my sister, whose hand that I hold, I speak over their life, Lord. I don't know what they've been praying for. I don't know what they've been believing you for. I don't know what they've been seeking you for. But on this Friday night, I add my faith to their faith. I add my power to their power. I add my strength to their strength. I add my anointing to their anointing. Grant him that touch, Lord. Grant her that move right now in the name of Jesus. And Satan, we come back on a Friday night to remind you that you are under our feet. And victory is already ours. And so, Lord, we don't wait till the battle is over, but we'll clap our hands right now. And we'll lift our voice and give you a shout of victory. For it's already done in Jesus' name. If you know it is done, somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Hug somebody before you sit down and tell them I'm glad to be in church with you all tonight. Just before I, uh, y'all have to forgive me, uh, at, at 78, it's, I have a right to forget some things. Uh, uh, but I, I, I have to recognize uh, Pastor Rick Robertson, uh, who came all the way from Temple, uh, Texas, uh, to represent the Central District uh, uh, of Texas. And, and, and Pastor Rick, he came up and he said that the Central District sent you a check. Now, deacons, this is my check because it's got my name on it, all right? And, and I opened this check, and, and I told y'all that he keeps on doing great things for me. Uh, I ain't going to tell you how much it is because then y'all going to want to borrow my money. And, but I got a check, D, with my name on it, that is 20 times what I put in the offering tonight. 20 times. And so, y'all should be, now if you got this check, y'all be shouting around the church. You know, but you, you ought to praise God for, for somebody else. Because look at your name and say, the next time it's me, it's me, it's me. It's me, I'm next in line. And so, I just want the deacons to know that this does not say uh, chosen vessel. It says Bishop Richard E. Young, and so it's going in my pocket. 
God bless you. You may be seated. And the church said, Amen. What a joy and a delight it is to be in the house of the Lord. Clap your hands, make some noise for our bishop. On tonight, our leader. Hold that, hold that note, Mike. Let me try that one more time. Clap your hands, make some noise for our leader on tonight. Our pastor. Your pa I don't hear nothing in here. Amen. Our first assistant presider and uh, Texas State Council Bishop, we thank God for him. And let's make some noise for, uh, uh, in, as he would put it, the Yellow Rose of Texas. Uh, Our Lady Young on tonight. Amen to everybody here on tonight, our family, our brothers and sisters. My, my purpose coming this weekend was threefold, of course, to come and, and celebrate uh, with you all in your church anniversary and Bishop's birthday uh, coming up and uh, pastoral anniversary. And then, yes, to come and uh, be with one of my mentors, Bishop Jones, but then also to come and make sure that y'all are taken care of on R. That's right. I had to come check and make sure that she was... She was all right, and I'm glad to see uh, that she is She is all right. She is uh, filling in uh, since I don't have mama here no more, so I got to make sure that those that I'm holding close to me are doing well. And so I'm glad to see that, and y'all ought to be glad to see that. Amen. And so I, won't, I, wouldn't, I was not going to be able to make it any other time. And next week I'll be in Chicago. Uh, all week for dad's birthday and and uh, their church convention and next sunday uh, the 18th will be his 74th birthday and he will also be preaching his final message as pastor of the apostolic pentecost church of morgan park he is retiring after almost 49 years of pastoring and we say that's enough so that's enough and uh so my youngest brother Bill will be taking over there in Chicago, so I definitely wanted to come in and share uh, while I was in, not in this way, but I definitely wanted to come in uh, and share part of y'all's Super September uh, celebration, so I'm grateful to God to be here, and yes, when I got the call from Bishop today, uh, it wasn't like I had a choice to say, you know, no thank you, so uh, you <laughs> you under you understand that. Uh, so uh, if you have a Bible, let's go to the Word. Uh, I was looking for the mass exodus when he, when he mentioned it earlier. I was Looking for the old school finger to go up and say, oh, no, not tonight. So since you all stayed, uh, let me use uh, about 12 minutes, and then I'm going to get happy all by myself, and you all can uh, uh, tarry on this evening. Amen. Take your Bibles where you hold it up as you stand to your feet and repeat after me. Tonight I am diligent in the word, directed by the word, obedient to the word. Uh, Lord, send your word. Through your word I have life. Through your word, I have direction. Through your word, I'm more than a conqueror. Uh, let's turn to Nehemiah chapter 8. And my other brother is here, Pastor Edgar Usher, uh, on today. Nehemiah chapter 8. And I too, like Bishop Talbot, uh, I didn't bring a Bible. I didn't bring nothing to preach. The word is hid in my heart. So uh, I had to tell um, uh, my elder there, get me a Bible. He got me one of the Bishop's Bible. And uh, it was already earmarked to Nehemiah chapter 7. So I said that must be where uh, the Lord had things already outlined. So chapter 8 of Nehemiah with your prayers and your amens at verse number 1. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man. Lord, if we could get the churches to just get together as one. Into the street that was before the water gate. And they spake unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded to Israel. And Ezra, the priest, brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and everybody that could hear with understanding upon the first day of the seventh month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate from the morning until midday, before the men and the women and those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. And Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood which they had made for the purpose. Jump down to verse 5. And Ezra opened the book 
in the sight of all the people, for he was above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God. And all the people answered, Amen. They bowed their worshiped the Lord in the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. And Nehemiah, last verse, which is the uh, Tershatha and Ezra, the priests, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. Mourn not, nor weep. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. Last verse here now. Then he said unto them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet, and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. For this day also is holy unto the Lord our God. Neither be ye sorry for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Father, bless your word in Jesus' name. Amen. As you take your seat, just turn to somebody and tell them, here comes the joy. Turn to somebody else and tell them, here comes the joy. This text is interesting, and as I shared it the other night, uh, in San Antonio, uh, in one of the revivals there, one of our Baptist churches, and and uh, I've looked at it before and dealt with it, but as I studied it the other day, it was something that was brought to my attention in reading and going to church and visiting different churches as it relates to how some of the people are when they come to church. Sometimes our disposition is not that of a joyful people. Sometimes our disposition is that of I could be somewhere else. And sometimes I've been tempted on Sunday morning to tell some of those that have those looks, if you don't really want to be here, why did you come? Uh, yes, because this house, somebody say this house, this house is different from your house. Uh, this house, I'm really just about done. This house is different from the mayor's house. This house is different from the governor's house. Thank the Lord that this house is surely different from the White House. This is the house of the Lord. Have y'all thought about it lately? Who is the Lord? He is the Lord, the King of glory, the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. This this house signifies that every time you come here, no matter how you came, you should leave differently than when you came. Can I get some help from you, Whitney? When you come to this house, there ought to be something distinctive that even before you get here, when you know that you are on your way to the Lord's house, something within you ought to automatically begin to be better. When was the last time you came to church and nothing happened? Don't put it on the preacher. Don't put it on the praise team. Don't put it on the deacons. Don't put it on anybody. If you come to the Lord's house one way and leave the same way, it doesn't have anything to do with the house. It has to do with your attitude about his house. Let me put it another way. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. I may not be glad in what has transpired in the day, but I am glad in the Lord who made the day because the Lord who made the day, if he allows whatever to happen, then my responsibility is not to change the events. My responsibility is to tell the Lord thank you that no matter no matter how bad it may be, if you're still the Lord of the day, it can get better. All right, let me put it another way. I will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. I will enter into his courts 
with praise. Don't bother nobody, but just ask yourself, how did I enter into the Lord's house tonight? I don't want you to touch nobody right now, but sometimes you got to ask yourself, how did I come in here? Did I come in here grumbling? Did I come in here with an attitude? Did I come in here wondering if Bishop Jones was going to be here? Did I come in here wondering, was he ever anyhow? How did I come into the house of the Lord? Because if I always come wondering if a personality is going to be there, I'll be disappointed a lot of times because I get disappointed knowing who's got to preach on Sunday morning and I'm the one bringing the word but when I come in expecting to hear from God it makes a difference that no matter who's up there I'm not looking for you I'm not looking for you I just want to know that the spirit of the Lord is in the house and so here Ezra he deals with this in the book of Nehemiah y'all know they were building hold on Mike I'm almost there ah, I'm getting there and, 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 and you know they just come with building of the wall and the rebuilding of the people and so now he says all the people gathered themselves together as one man oh if we could just get together because y'all do know the miracle of Acts chapter 2 wasn't per se the Holy Ghost falling. The real miracle was that they were all together in one place and on one accord. See, something is going to happen, but it's not going to happen until we get together on one accord. Uh, we will put it this way. We've come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. But the verse I like about it says, let's forget about ourselves and concentrate on him. I remember message preached there around 1991, 92 at a midwinter convention in Nashville, Tennessee. This young preacher preached this message. You ain't so suchy much. And you know, sometimes I remember that message. And yes, sometimes we got to be reminded that we got to forget about ourselves because we really ain't nothing in the first place. But by the grace of God, wouldn't it be so wonderful, pastors that are here, when we come to church, if the saints could just get together for at least 15 minutes, forgetting about where I'm going to eat after church, forget about this and forget about that, and just really concentrate on him. How many folks really could get saved? How many folks really could get delivered before a worship song is sung, before a scripture is word, before a preacher preaches the message if we can get on one accord we surely could see a mighty move of God the text let's walk through the text quickly it says they gathered together as one man and Ezra the scribe brought the book of the law of Moses which the Lord had commanded and Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation both of men and women and everybody that could hear with an understanding if they could grasp it in other words they were there let me go back old school that meant everybody came to church wish I had one somebody right there that means when it was church night nobody stayed at home yeah it was not like today where the children tell the parents uh, I ain't going you know some of us come on waving me some of us come up in the day where it was not even about asking if you lived in that house you knew when church was you were going and Lord don't be half dressed running out the house because mom and daddy would leave you and if they left you, that was an extra whipping for not being ready. When, yeah, I wish I had somebody right there. Everybody came to church. They brought their homework. What no coming up with nothing to stay home. No, you brought your homework. You slept in the church. They made sure that you were in the house of the Lord. But nowadays, folks don't know where their kids are or what they're doing. But I'm so glad I came up in a day and time that we were in the arms of Jesus we were found in the house of the Lord and maybe we were playing but after we got through playing it did get real sooner or later coming real quick if we had more folks today that would get their children back in the house of the Lord we would have so many killings 
Ah, uh, yeah. If we had our generation today that was connected to the book, somebody say the book. See, because what's happened, I come up in a day, and yes, you know, I'm glad I did. My parents were not my friends. They were my parents. Yeah, I'm new school, but I'm more old school, you know, you know, you know, you know. Uh, they, they whipped us. They, matter of fact, it wasn't whipping. They abused us. Extension cords were abused. Y'all kind of quiet behind me. Uh-huh. The broom handle was abuse. The switch off the tree that you, why y'all quiet in here? That you had to go get. And if it wasn't the right switch, that extended the beating time on you. The pots, the pans. Anybody remember the backhand from mama? Anybody remember getting whipped in the middle of the night and you thought you were dreaming and you woke up and said, I know I'm not getting beat in the middle of the night and they were whipping you for something you did a month ago but it kept you off of drugs yeah it kept some of us out of prison it didn't keep us from not trying stuff but when we thought about in the house of the lord anybody could whip you if the saints got you you couldn't complain because if you're told that somebody else whipped you when you got home you got whipped again but it was because there was a connection to the book We've lost the connection. We've lost the connection. Eight minutes, I'm out of here. The connection that we've lost is this. There is a generation that does not know the Lord. Let me digress to Judges chapter 2. The Bible says when Joshua and the elders closed their eyes, there arose another generation. This generation did not know the Lord, neither did they acknowledge the things that he had done and it was not that they didn't know the Lord but they acted like that God had never done anything when they saw God work for their parents when they saw God work for their grandparents but this generation got disconnected from the book somebody say the book because the book keeps you in line yes the book keeps you in order the book will cut you on one hand but then it'll come right back and put some healing ointment on you if we had a generation of parents that really knew the book and made sure that children were connected to the book we wouldn't have as much trouble as we have today talk to me uh, and i'm not it's no indictment on young people today but oh we know more about facebook than we do about faith uh -huh. We can spend hours on Facebook, but can't spend 10 minutes reading the faith book. I wish I had somebody right there. Uh huh. And yet when we came to church, we had to pay attention. Uh huh. They wouldn't let us be playing in church. You better listen to the preacher. Hear what the preacher has to say. And this generation knows any and everything. They know every song. They know all of Beyonce's songs word for word they know the moves I see some of them shaking stuff they ain't even got yet but they know all that they know all the Diddy stuff they know everything that's out there don't get me wrong some of them might be at the bad boy concert tonight but anyhow that's another question ah yeah they know all this stuff but if you say what does Psalm 23 say where is Psalm 23 is that New Testament no there's a disconnection from the book which is why we have a generation that is going away from God but somebody better get reconnected to the book because the world is in trouble our nation is in trouble our churches are in trouble and the question is who is calling for the book yes because here's what the text says the text says he read in the book and the called for it. We're in a crisis in America. You don't know who to vote for. 
Yes, yeah, one is saying he's a liar. The other one's saying she's a liar. They all lie. I don't know any politician that's ever told the truth. Uh, um, yeah, they doing this. You don't know, do I vote A or B? I told somebody other day, I'm going to just write my name in there when I go in there on November. Submit my name. I got a better chance. At least I know something. I wish I had somebody about the book. Uh -huh. Our world is in trouble. War is threatening us because of a disconnect. Can I tell y'all something? President Obama got in there. We were happy. He went in there again. We were happy. But he didn't have the answer. And he still doesn't have the answer. Whoever gets in there next won't have the answer. The Republicans don't have the answer. The Democrats don't have the answer. Any other group doesn't have the answer. You want to know, is there an answer? Yes, there is an answer. It's in the Word. I wish I had one Bible reader of the Lord. That's why you need to be in church when the preacher is preaching. That's why you need to be in church when Bible class is going on. But more than that, when you don't come to church, you better make sure that you're opening up this book because the book says, in all thy ways, acknowledge the Lord and he will direct thy path. The book says I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. All my help coming from the Lord. The book says thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stable. Is there anybody in here that's glad for the book? Oh, I got to close here. Ah, four minutes and I'm getting out your way. He reads from the book. And everybody that could hear and understand. Oh, if we could go back. Some people are doing it. But if we could go back to making sure our children read the Bible before they went to bed. Uh-huh, yeah, go back to the days where the parents just walked up in the room, even with the door closed, without knocking, just walk up in the room. What you doing in here? This is my room. No, it ain't. You ain't paid a bill since you've been born. I'm trying to get you out of this house as quick as I can. Have I got a witness right there? Instill something in them so they know more about God because, as the old saints would say, if we ever need him, the Lord before we sure do need him now. The text says, Ezra stood upon the pulpit of wood. They made it for that purpose. And then he says, Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was above them. And when he opened it, the people stood up. We respect the word of God. But one thing in the text that I really liked about it, it one passage it says, they called for the book to be read. Yes, oh, wouldn't it be wonderful? When was the last time? I'm not talking about y'all, but I thought about it the other day, Dr. Myron. I said, when was the last time the church just really said, Pastor, you're not preaching enough? Uh, let me talk to this group back here. When was the last time we just said, Pastor, we need some more word revival? I wish I had somebody in here. When was the last time the folks just said, I wish we could have a week revival and don't bring nobody in. Let's just hear our own pastor. I'm not done. I'm just, you know, I was when I was reading the text. When was the last time we really called for the book? Can I tell y'all? Stop calling for Oprah. She's crazy. Stop calling for Dr. Phil. He ain't got no sense. Stop calling Steve Harvey. He has no idea. But somebody better go old school. If you call on Jesus, see y'all don't get happy about Jesus no more. We only get happy about a new car, a new house, a prophetic word. But is there anybody in here on a Friday night that'll help me close real quick and say I still get happy about Jesus? Is there anybody in here that when you hear the name Jesus it still turns you on? When you hear the name Jesus it sends chills up and down your spine? Is there anybody in here that know there's something about out the name of Jesus. Oh, I got to leave you. So how do we bring the joy back? We get back into the word. That's why when the word is going forth, you don't want nobody distracting you. You don't want nobody talking and, and touching you because you just might miss that timing of the word. Three 
minutes, see Sean, Mike, and I'm out of here. They said, we want the book because they understood if we don't hear a word from the Lord, we are not going to make it, which is why one writer said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will stand forever. See, because when I'm sick in my body and when the doctor said, I can't do no more, I need somebody to get the book. Wish I had somebody right now because the book says he was wounded. Wish I had somebody that knew the book right there for my transgressions. When my job is closed down and I don't know how I'm going to make it, I need somebody to get the book and open the book and tell me, but my God shall supply all my need. When things are going on in my life and I don't know which way to turn, I need somebody to get the book and tell me what the book says, that he will give me a peace that it all understand it. Huh? When it looked like the devil has got me and it's just about over, somebody get me the book. Huh? Cause the book will remind me huh? that no weapon formed against me huh? shall prosper. Huh? Shake one neighbor's hand right there huh? and say, can you get me the book? Huh? Come on, Mike, I got to go now. Huh? I got to ride out of here. Huh? But shake one neighbor's hand huh? and say, neighbor, huh? I want to ask you a question. Huh? Do you know the book? Huh? Yes. When was the last time huh? you really got in the book huh? and read it for yourself? Huh? Because when you read the book, huh? that means you got to open your mouth. Huh? And that's what the Lord wants you to do. Huh? When you read the book, huh? he don't just want you whispering it. Huh? He wants you to open your mouth huh? and read it loud. Huh? Somebody said, well, why does he want you? I think I feel like preaching anyhow. Why does he want you to open your mouth when you read the book? The reason he wants you to read it loud is because he wants to hear you say what he said about your life. Because when he hears you say what he said about your life, it makes him want to bring it to pass. High five a neighbor and say, neighbor, the next time you read the book, read it loud and be proud. Because the Lord, he wants to hear what he's getting ready to do. Can I tell somebody, when you read the book, you will find out that he will make your enemies be at peace with you. If your ways please him, that sounds like good news. When I read the word, I want to hear my voice say what the Lord said to me, that he is my light and my salvation. That sound good to me. Grab one more neighbor and say, neighbor, y'all ain't preaching yet. Come on, get your preaching voice on. Take you a deep breath and say, neighbor, I need a word from the Lord. I got to close, yo. But the text says, not only was it in the book, but in verse number six, the Bible said that Ezra, he blessed the Lord, the great God. How do I get the joy? I got to get in the book, but I got to get back to some worship. And I mean some real worship. Because y'all know the word, the word blessed, it's from the Greek word, eulogio, where we get the English word, eulogy, which simply means to speak well. And we usually do it when somebody's laid out, we wait on the eulogy. But the last time I checked, the God that we serve, he's not dead, but he's yet alive. 
and I ask y'all a question Is there anybody in the building on a Friday night that can open your mouth and speak well about the Lord? Y'all ain't saying nothing Is there anybody in here on a Friday night that'll turn to a neighbor and say neighbor church early this morning kept me in my right mind is there anybody in the building that can eulogize God grab another neighbor and say neighbor come on find somebody that look like they can say something good about the Lord and say neighbor here's my eulogy he brought me from a mighty long way should have been dead in my grave but the Lord he made old death made death behave I got to leave y'all thank you bishop for letting me fill in but the bible says they gotta get back to the real worship and I mean real worship when you don't need the praise team don't get me wrong I enjoy the praise team but when there's real worship you don't praise the Lord on the way to church when there's real worship you went real old school like the old school church soon as you open your eyes in the morning you said just another day thank you that the Lord has kept me good evening now may the Lord bless you real good but tell one more neighbor here come the joy y'all ain't preaching come on run across the aisle and grab somebody cause I ain't got but two minutes run jog and walk fast and grab a neighbor and say neighbor here come the joy Wipe the tears from your eyes. Stop your crying. Cause we read the word. We bless the Lord. So while you're crying, cause the joy of the Lord is your strength. When I think of the goodness of Jesus at all. And I can't remember everything is done. But what I can remember, I just can't to tell the Lord thank you for walking with me thank you for holding me when I felt like giving up thank you for putting the devil in his place is there any 